This call Rebecca and Eliza at the well and Jacob wrestling the angel. Both of these pages are from the Vienna Genesis. This is considered early Byzantine from the early sixth century and materials. This is illuminated manuscript. So what the illuminated manuscript is, it's paint or pigments on vellum. That's the type of paper, um, tempera, gold, silver on purple vellum. All right, so College Board gives us two images to know. So Rebecca is on the left, and then Jacob wrestling the angel is on the right, and there's just a detail below here. All right, so the word manuscript, right? This is a book, document, or piece of music written by hand, because when this is made, this is before the printing press. We already went over the forms here. Um, so these are considered folios, like individual sheets, or pages. This would have been something very time consuming because each page is made from animal skin. So this is made specifically from the skin of a cat, the calf skin, and then bound together on one edge into a codex. So that's an early form of a book. Uh, this originally had 96 folios or 96 pa pages. Only 24 of them survive. 48 painted illustrations with the Bible story written above each illustration. And there's an example of a, of a codex. So like I said, to produce a book at this time, it would have been a major undertaking because there is no printing press yet. All right, this was written in silver ink on purple parchment. The silver ink has now been tarnished and turned black, but at the time this would have had a gleaming kind of shiny surface. So that all equals expensive materials. Um, like I said, the sheets are all dyed purple and that color is restricted for imperial use. Purple parchment is a hallmark of royal institution. Therefore, the assumption is that this, it being a luxurious object, was made for a wealthy patron. All right, specifically um, the content. So what the story is about, this is Rebecca and Eliza at the well. So you're seeing Rebecca more than once in the same scene. So what is that called? That is a continuous narrative. We've seen this before. So a character seen multiple times with no divider between the scenes. Um, it just helps the artist tell the story. And then what you're seeing on the left, this is a personification of the spring. Um, we actually have that in the column of Trajan. This is the Danube River, Danube River, personified in a man. So you're seeing that again with Rebecca and Eliza at the well. All right, so specifically about the content, the text. This is the Greek translation of Genesis. And if you don't know what Genesis is, this is the first book of the Old Testament. You don't need to write down what the Old Testament is if you don't know, or if you do know. If you don't know what the Old Testament is, go ahead and write what the Old Testament is. Specifically, so in the story, Abraham sends his servant, Eliza to find a wife for his son, Isaac, and then Rebecca helps him by giving him water for himself and his camels. So therefore he chooses her as the wife. All right, so we need to talk about how does the artist depict a 3D space in this tiny little painting? You're correct. So there's lots of overlapping going on, right? There's Eliza in front of the camels, there's Rebecca in front of this architecture, there's the personification of the spring actually sitting in the setting. You have shading in the back legs and some of the camels that are farther back or modeling, right? We're seeing modeling um, in the way the artist is depicting the drapery of the fabric. And then we also have this little aerial or bird's eye view of the architecture. And then it's also drawn kind of in this awkward or skewed perspective, but it's still portrayed in perspective. All right, then the next page or folio is Jacob wrestling the angel. So here's the specific content, what it's about. So Jacob takes his two wives, two maids and 11 children and is crossing a river. So you can see right here, they're going over this bridge, which wraps around. You can see arches, right? An arcade of arches on the left. And then an arcade of arches on the right as the bridge wraps. You also have a colonnade, repeating columns. So nice detail with the architecture. Um, then down here, Jacob is wrestling the angel. There's a tiny detail right here of the angel touching Jacob's hip. And this actually displaces his hip 
It's part of the biblical story. And then to the left, so over here, the angel is giving Jacob his blessing. All right, so again, we're seeing Jacob, 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 Jacob. So that's a continuous narrative, right? Helping to tell the story, but not being divided. Um, there's a nice little detail of one of his wives on a horse and you see the back of her. So that's just a really good use of perspective because then she is actually looking back up on the bridge. But again, really nice use of modeling, which is just fancy for shading in the, the drapery and the overlapping, like this crowd of people here, really good sense of space. Our, all of their heads are also a little enlarged so you can see facial expressions a little better. All right, if you want to read what it says in the actual Genesis, there it is. All right, so who would this have been made for? How do we know this? We talked about that. That's a good question to be able to review. What other illuminated manuscripts have we looked at? So we haven't looked at others yet um, in class, but we're going to have a lot of illuminated manuscripts or folio pages. So we did look at Hugh Nefer, and again, continuous narrative, right? You have Hugh Nefer, Hugh Nefer, and then he is, there is a register and he's up there as well. All right, so from this unit, we do have these from this unit. So um, in class, we're gonna have this comparison page. So we should be able to talk about differences between all of these illuminated manuscripts. Done.